of the A in empathy. That's where we are, is attitude. Noticing your attitude. The patients can have bad attitudes, but we also have some bad attitudes. We are going into a room or a situation where someone is in pain. And our attitude toward the suffering in our own lives is something that I've found that I need to address. I came back from a trip to Africa. I spent three weeks doing neurosurgery there. And 10 days after I came back, I ended up with pneumonia. It was a very stressful time. It was long lines of people, uh, late surgeries, long surgeries, uh, difficult operations, a lot of uh, 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 tragedies and tragic situations. I came back exhausted, plus the jet lag. Um, I ended up with pneumonia. And I became sort of angry. Like, I didn't deserve this. And people who are giving, who are serving, imagine the people most of the people in healthcare, because you are giving so much, there can be a bit of entitlement that you don't deserve to be sick. That because you're serving somehow that God owes you something, that you deserve a little more than other people. And we can get this chip on our shoulder and there's nothing that steals your joy faster than entitlement expecting God or someone else to make this easy for you. And so checking your attitude. There's something about suffering. Suffering is universal, but misery is optional. Suffering is universal. Misery is optional. That is an attitude that you are choosing. That is something that you've said, uh, yeah, I I do not deserve this. And I've found that it's important for me when I'm going through the tough times to, I mean, what is the opposite of entitlement? I, I think it's gratitude. And sometimes I am so far down, I have trouble even figuring out what am I thankful for? Everything is going badly. And I'll start with my eyes, and I'll say, God, I thank you for my eyes. There are people I know that cannot see, but I can. Thank you for my eyes. Oh, and I can hear, too. Thank you that I can hear. And I'll start sort of at the very basics, because there is so much of life that we take for granted. And that as we start adopting an attitude of gratitude, it is the anti-entitlement. It will get you into a frame of mind that is more relational. Because when we're stressed, when we're angry, the first thing that happens is that our relationships, our ability to relate to others, it just the wall comes down. I only want the problem or the person to go away. It's no longer a person, it's no longer my uh, wife or friend or patient, it's just a problem in my life and I want it to go away. And you know this happens when you're in traffic, right? The person in front of you is not really a person. They are just an obstacle in your way to get where you need to go. Or a resource who will move out of the way so you can get where you need to go. So if you notice that the people in your life that usually mean something to you are either obstacles or you're treating them as resources to get what you want, you've got a problem with your relationships, and probably stress is causing that. And so one of the antidotes is to say, what is it about this person that I appreciate? I went through the gratitude for myself, the things I appreciate about me, but to get my relational circuits back on with this person, what do I appreciate about them? It's strange that I don't see anything that I appreciate right now. There must be a problem with me. It's maybe it's not them.
So the T in empathy is touch. I find that people need healthy, affirming touch. One of my favorite things in the, in the hospital is to grab the patient's toes through the blanket of their hospital bed and wiggle them a little bit while I smile at them. Because they're not going to remember what I said. I can promise you that. They need the sheet printed out of my instructions. They're not going to remember more, more than a couple of words. But they are going to remember that I cared about them. That I cared enough to, to know that it's tough to be in a hospital bed and to feel so out of control. I get that. But that touch says, I'm, I'm here with you. And we're in this together. And for our friends, and especially for our loved ones, that affirming touch can be so very, very helpful. The other T can be tone of voice. Are you speaking in sort of this dominant, commanding tone? Because the research shows that it a, a study, a research study with students, and they took the, um, they took doctors who were talking with patients, they Audio, did an audio tape of it. They took all of the words out, but they left the tone in. So the words were sort of jumbled words, but they left the tone in. You couldn't recognize what they were saying, just their tone. And college students were able to choose the doctors that had been sued before. A dominant, commanding, staccato tone or a tone of concern. What is your tone to the people that you love or to the people in your life, to your patients? The H in empathy is hope. And I believe that so much of medicine is fear-based and that it's essential that we hold out hope to people, that we encourage their hope, that we bless them with hope, that we sort of cultivate it for them. There is always hope in a relationship if it's not working well. There is always hope for reconciliation. Even if a person has died, there's a, there is hope for forgiveness. We can, we can forgive and move to a different aspect, to a different appreciation of that relationship. There is always hope. Giving people hope and the why in empathy is your feelings. What is it when you're talking to a patient, what is it that's going on inside of you? Because if suddenly you're feeling angry, it might not be coming from you. That might be your clue that they're really angry. Because we pick up other people's emotions. We are incredible that way. The brain is phenomenal at understanding, picking up these little cues of what is going on around you. And so if you're feeling angry or suddenly fearful or scared, that may not be your stuff. That may be coming from them and you may want to ask a question, what is it that, uh, you know, are you, are you afraid of something? Or, you know, you seem, you seem angry. Is there something not going on, not going well with you?